Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. Um, for our last program for today, well, not for today, but for um, before Nelly Cruz will go to the main stage, um, we have Ines Silva from Portugal, who is from Startup Pirates, and she will talk about her experience as a startup, especially focusing on the internationalization process. Um, just please welcome her and Thank you. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Hello. I think it's so unfair to speak after Alex because he's like so excited and now I have to be like the, the one that speaks about what I'm doing but he's not as sexy as cool and as cool as what he's doing. But okay, I will try to do my best. So Alex before asked uh, he, uh, who were from Spain. Anyone from Portugal? No? Oh, really? Hello. <laughs> so we have someone from Portugal. It, it's great. So basically, I'm going to start uh, talking to you about Startup Pirates, our internationalization pro uh, process. And basically, uh, I, I'm going to be uh, to do a, a small introduction about myself, then talk to you about Startup Pirates, what we did to go abroad, how it worked, and how, what we learned. And then in the end, I, I, I would like to... Uh, answer all, you, all the questions you have and then talk to you a little bit about other program that we created called Startup Exchange Program. So it's going to take 30 minutes and I hope it's fun. So basically I would like to start to, uh, to present myself. I'm from Portugal, I'm 23 years old and for the past year I've been working on uh, Startup Pirates um, and as a chief pirate office, we don't like the normal cool names. We use this one for everyone uh, in the in the company. And what we do basically is we help uh, young entrepreneurs, people that want to start companies. We help them kickstart that process. Uh, how we do that? Basically, but we we organize a one week acceleration and one week acceleration program. We have workshops. We have mentoring. We have. Um, we have a lot of different people coming to, uh, to, uh, to the stage and coming to the event. And we really help individuals, people that have an idea, people that want to start something on their own, and people that are in the very beginning on the, of that process. Uh, we give them the tools, we give them the resources, we give them the network, and from then on, it's much easier for them, for them, for them to keep going, keep working on their projects, and, and start their own companies. We started this last year uh, in September, and since since then we we are now in, uh, in different countries in in, in different uh, continents, and we have five startups running um, in Portugal, and we hope to have more startups running uh, outside Portugal as well. Uh, the feedback that we have been receiving is quite great. We are very focused on. Uh, making sure that we have results in the end. I think Alex was uh, saying a, a very interesting thing that a lot of people run accelerators, a lot of people run different programs, startup programs, but not only everyone really uh, spends that much time focusing on impact, on, on the, the impact that that program is going to have on the entrepreneurs that uh, participate in it. So this is something that we really, really uh, spend a lot of time working on. And, uh, and so far, we, we have been successful in, in having impact. And the, 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 the feedback that we have been receiving from the participants is quite good. But of course, we want to improve. And we want to make sure that in the future, uh, everyone like, really, really likes what we are doing and ha really lives an experience that is different from anything else they already lived before. This is the team. Uh, we are pirates, as we so usually say. Um, we have... Uh, this, we are a team of five people, all, everyone uh, working in Portugal, and we have our Peach, our mascot, the small parrot that you can see, uh, and this was in our uh, birthday party. So basically, right now I'm going to talk to you about what we did in terms of going abroad. Um, Startup Pirates is now in 10 different countries in, four, in the four continents. We are around Europe, we are in uh, South Africa, Algeria, China, Brazil. So basically over the past year we did a lot of different things to make sure that we could actually go, get a, go abroad, really work with people in different countries, in different places and really help these people uh, there. But uh, like anyone, when, it, when we started something, we really don't know what to do and how to do it. So we have, uh, like, we have learned so much over the past few, uh, few months. And 
really learn how to uh, go to a country, talk with them and see what we can do to, to be there. So the first thing that I think it was very, 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 very important for us was from day one, uh, we thought like we want to be an international organization. Um, so it was much easier for us to think like, oh, we are so from Portugal. Portugal is a, such a small country. We don't have money, so let's focus on what we have. Let's focus on Portugal. But instead, we thought like, no, let's go abroad. Let's think about what we can do to be from day one an international organization. And what we did was we never everything we we did was in English, so it's the language that is internationally recognized. Everything that the way we communicate with others, the way we communicate with all other organizations, uh, the participants, was always, only, always in English. And even in our first program in Portugal, the program was in, in English. And because of that, we had like five different nationalities in our first program. Uh, it was super fun because in Portugal, a lot of people think that we come from the outside. They think that we are from the, in the United States. Uh, and we, we have to explain them time after time that we, we are from Portugal, we were born from Portugal, in Portugal, and even after I explain everything, they still don't believe, which is strange, but at the same time, I think it's, it's good for us, because uh, I think most places around Europe, we think that the things that come from the outside are, are better uh, than the things that we have in our own country, so in our case, that works very well. Another thing was from, I think it has to do about the Lean Startup Movement and about asking people to be involved in the program from day one as well. We start thinking, uh, talking with people like Alex, like other people around uh, Europe and the, uh, around the world about what we are doing, about our idea to build this program, about like asking questions like, do you think that this is people need this? Do you think that we are going to make any difference? Do you think that we are different from other existing programs? Do you think that we are going to really, really make a difference in terms of what we are building? How we are going to make impact? And we, are, we were talking with potential participants, potential uh, organizers, potential advisors, people that really knew how the scene looked like. And Basically, that really, really helped us because when we really started like, uh, kicking off the program, a lot of people already knew about us and people that we really, really admire and they could help us in the future. Another thing, like we went to as many events as possible. Um, I think from like over the past year, I, I've been in so, so many events, both in Portugal, but especially in, uh, internationally. And I think sometimes it's very tiring. I remember last time I was in Berlin, I was here for eight days and I went to 10 different events. And some of them were like three days events. So I was like going every day to a different event, meeting different people, letting them to know what I, what I was doing. And like trying to see like what we, we can do to, to work together, what we can do to... Um, like help each other and this this really really helped us because we, we never know what the people are uh, in front of you are going to say about what you are doing sometimes they like sometimes they don't like but you learn anyway and it's good for us because like a few months after the, this event we, we receive an email saying like ah oh, i really like what you were saying now I, I like i have some free time i would like to work with you and i was like oh okay it's perfect for us it's perfect to have these opportunities to really work with different people and that's uh, a great opportunity for us another thing that i think is very very important is like if I, I, I now believe that you only have an international mindset if you live in another country for a few months, uh, at least. Uh, over the past a year, I've, I've lived in seven months in Zurich, uh, in Switzerland, and it's not, of course, a uh, tech. Uh, they don't have like a tech startup scene. They have a few startups, but the experience of living there, living abroad, the experience of um, really creating this mindset of international mindset, the experience of being in a different country where you have to meet people from the very beginning, you don't have anyone, you don't have any roots of friendships. It was really, really important for us because from that perspective, I could see ourselves going much more, uh, much further. And, and, and you can see other companies that have the same example. I'm not sure if you know Buffer. Buffer app is, um, 
is a tech startup. Uh, they have a very cool pro uh, product, and they, they first they started in the UK, then they went to the United States, and then because the visa expired, they decided to go to Hong Kong, and they were there for six months, and they loved the experience of being there. They built like a community there for, for themselves, and then they went to, uh, now they are in Tel Aviv. And they will be there like for three months, building a community there. People are getting to know them, and then they want to go back to the United States. Um, so basically, they 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 have been in the four uh, corners of the world. They have built communities there. People know uh, know them because otherwise, of course, so we are in the age of the internet and and so for, uh, and so on. But it's still difficult to. Um, Get your product out if you are uh, stuck in your garage waiting for something to happen. It's really, really cool if you go outside, if you live abroad, if you talk with as, as many people as, as possible, and if you can spend like a few months in a different country, it's, it's very, very, very interesting. And for us, it worked very well. And, and finally, we use the powers of networks. And for me, this is a very, the most important one. Uh, everyone is part of a network. Everyone is part, uh, like everyone is uh, a part of different networks depending on the, uh, your tastes. Fortunately for me, I'm part of uh, many networks from uh, social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Um, I, I like a lot of different things, and these people really help me um, get my uh, like increase the the chances to be successful outside my own, uh, my own comfortable zone. For example, um, right now we are going to be in Dublin uh, in two months. We are going to have an event there. And that would be impossible if I, didn't, uh, if I wasn't part of this network that allowed me to meet someone that is very, very influential in the, the local startup scene. And we talked. I actually, when I, when I started talking with him, my idea was just show what, uh, what I, uh, I was doing, just ask some, for some feedback. But then you're like, oh, I, like some, uh, I, I really like your product, I really want to work with you, let's start this. And suddenly, like, after uh, like a, a few, uh, like uh, two weeks, he was getting back to me and saying, like, oh, we, are, we, we want to do this in three months. And I was like, oh, okay, that's perfect, let's do that. It's a challenge for us, but it's really, really cool. And this is like what can happen with networks. And I think everyone here, if you have a tech startup, if you have any kind of project, uh, if you know people, as many people as possible, of course, some people that you know, or uh, some people that are your Facebook friends or Twitter followers won't uh, help you with anything. But at least if you can really, really build some good relationship with some people around the world in different networks, it can really, really help you. So basically, this worked very well for us. Um, right now, after only uh, almost uh, only a, a year, we are in all these countries. We are missing here a few events because we have more in Brazil and two, I think one more in uh, in Europe. And and it's very it's been very interesting because we are able to help entrepreneurs in all these locations we are able to influence all these ecosystems be part of this ecosystem and for us when we start startup pirates we wanted to help entrepreneurs but we also wanted to learn what these ecosystems were doing see what we can do to help them and see what we can learn from them and take that learning to other to the other ecosystems and I think that was it's very interesting. And of course, I'm proud to have this, uh, to show, can show this map. And I hope in a year that I can show a map with like 100 lamps uh, all over the world, because this way I will see that my efforts of this year really, really w were worth it. And now, another thing that I, I, I believe this very, very, very important is like what we learn in this process. And I think the first thing is like, you are never ready to go global. That's one of the things that we learned from the very beginning. And we actually, we weren't ready. When we started our first program in Porto, uh, a few weeks before the first program, I received an email saying like, ah, oh, I want to organize this same program in Lisbon. And for us it was like, like you don't know what the program is going to look like. 
we are not sure if it's going to be successful or not. So why you want to organize uh, this uh, Startup Paris event in Lisbon? But it was a challenge for us. And we, we started working with the local organizers team. And they did an amazing, amazing event. But definitely at that time, we felt that we were not ready to expand. We are not ready to grow um, as we did. And then it was even before our second program, we had someone saying uh, in Bratislava saying to us, like, we want to organize a startup piracy here. What, uh, what should we do to, to do it? And we, we were like, what? Uh, we never thought that we would be in Slovakia. And after like three or four months of we just, start, we just started it, we, we were there. So I think it, it was really, really a challenge. We were definitely not ready to do it. Uh, but we work really hard and we make sure that we are ready uh, just after like uh, after a few weeks and uh, another thing I'm not sure it depends what kind of uh, startup do you have but don't be too patriotic uh, because in my case um, in, in, in my team you have this uh, usually we say like ah oh, we, we have so many people that need to be entrepreneurs here in Portugal let's focus on here and after a few uh, months thinking like this we, we realized that that wasn't a very good approach uh, because it's good to be uh, to help your country. It's good to be to help your ecosystem, but it's even better if you can help as many ecosystems uh, as possible. And if you are really helping people that really want to be helped, because sometimes, of course, like we have a lot of people uh, in our own ecosystem that really want to be entrepreneurs, but we have others that don't want to be entrepreneurs at all. Uh, so it's very, very important to sh make sure um, that you really are, uh, are focused on what is best for you and now with what is best for your country or, or ecosystem or anything. I if you want to really, really make a difference, focus on what is best for you. And then uh, I would say, like, be careful with the big country, big market uh, trap, I guess, uh, because... A lot of, uh, like you see, Germany is a big country, Spain is a big country, uh, France is a big country, and when you focus too much on your own country, um, after a while it's quite difficult to get, uh, go abroad. Uh, I, of course I believe that it's not too, never too late to go abroad, but if you are too focused on your country, it can be difficult, and some, uh, of, some uh, of, uh, you realize that you are, after all, you are just too focused on your country, and you, you don't have the strength, the resources to go abroad. So I believe it's very, very important. Um, if you think, like we were saying before, you have to think from day one that you want to be an international organization, that you want to go abroad. Otherwise, you'll feel, uh, you fall into the, uh, this trap and it's going to be quite, quite difficult. Then um, I think it's like, don't waste too much time testing uh, your product in your own market. Uh, because most of us live in, in markets that are very, very small. Um, for example, uh, Portugal or most countries in Europe, they have like between 10 million people to 15 million people. So if in that 10 million people, probably like two, 1 million, 2 million will have smartphones, how many of them are going to use your app or, or, or how many of them do, do really have uh, um, iPad apps? Uh, iPad, uh, iPad uh, devices. So it's really important to t start testing on your, uh, on your market, but then go uh, r right after uh, you start to go abroad. And then another thing, like you need money to go global. I, I know that a lot of people say like, ah, oh, you don't need money. Uh, you, ha you can b bootstrap and so on, but actually you need money. Because uh, if you want to go to be part of, in, uh, if you go to conferences, you want to, if you want to go to meetings, if you want to be in this, uh, all these different markets, people really need to hear about you, uh, about you. Really hear to, to need to hear about what you are doing. And without money, it's quite difficult. I, I will give you an example. For example, um, a few months ago, I was talking with a friend of mine that is now building a, a, an app for uh, iPad. And he was talking to me, saying like, "Ah, oh, I'm going abroad. I just put the iPad, uh, the, uh, the app on the, uh, uh, the Apple Store, and everyone is going to buy it." Uh, and I was like, "Okay, uh, that can happen, but it's quite difficult that, uh, that to happen because people need to hear about you." Like Alex was saying, it's all about noise. You have when you go to the App Store, you have uh, like millions of apps. 
why should you, you choose that one instead of that one? You, people really need to hear about your product, about what you are doing, and you need money to do that. Even if you have an app that is for free, if you want to, take, uh, to really make a business out of it, you need to have salesperson, you need to find a business model, and you need, you need to spend money into it. So it takes, uh, takes time, it takes money to go global, and, um, and you, you make sure that you understand that from the very beginning. Another thing, and this is like one of the things that worry me uh, quite a lot these days, is like one day your uh, network will end. Basically, you have all this, uh, you have a network, you are part of different networks, but maybe one day um, your network, no one is going to be able to help you. So one of the things that is very, very important is like keep expanding your network, keep meeting people. Like, uh, like I was saying, go to conferences, go to events, and make sure that people heard, heard about your, what you are doing and like your product and want to keep in touch. Um, like what I'm saying, like one day your network will end. And finally, uh, all countries are different. Um, if you want to go to Portugal, Spain, German, or U the UK, it's quite different. The approach needs to be different. The way you handle people is different. The way you present your product is, di uh, is different. So you really, really, uh, really need to be careful and have this in mind. Uh, when we started with Startup Pirates, a lot of th uh, people asked me, like, uh, what, uh, how you do it in Portugal? And I, I explain to them and they say, like, oh, that would be impossible uh, in my country. So, uh, so that's, that's what, what happened. One of the things is, for, is very easy, for example, in Portugal it's quite easy to find the venue of, or one of the events for free. People just offer you the venue because they, have they want to advertise and they want to be uh, part of a very cool program that you are organizing. And then I was talking with people from other countries, like, for example, Cape Town. Um, uh, and they were saying to me, like, oh, it's very difficult here to find a place for free. Everyone wants to... To, to get some money, and I was like, oh, okay, but what, and we have to work things and work together to make things happen. And so it's very, very important to, to know that everyone is different, every country are different, not only in terms of cultural, uh, culture, but also, also in terms of the way they see uh, the opportunities, the way they see um, what is happening around them, and the way they, see they want to be involved in the local startup ecosystem. It's very difficult, I think, uh, to sometimes to understand that uh, we are different, uh, different, uh, different from Silicon Valley, and uh, as I, I, th I, I, I guess like Alex would agree, it's impossible to replicate the Silicon Valley uh, culture in Europe, uh, uh, as well as it's impossible to replicate the Berlin ecosystem that we have here now in other countries in Europe, because every different countries are different, and you, you need different things to make them, uh, them happen and to make, make things happen. So uh, now I would like to talk to you about uh, the Startup Exchange program. Basically, last year, we realized that we were being quite successful in terms of uh, expanding international, uh, internationally, but we felt that a lot of people in Europe, it was very difficult for them to go international. So we started this program, the Startup Exchange program, to help people from different, uh, in the beginning from the six different countries in the world, to go from one country to another country, to work there in an incubator, and for two to three months develop their program. The, like, we, we, we tested this this summer, and things didn't work out the way we wanted, because there were so many things, it was a new thing, we didn't know how, what to expect. But next year we want to do it again. Basically, we really want to help entrepreneurs around Europe to go to different countries because we believe it's the easiest way you have to expand your product to, or to different countries. And one example is like a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, startups in the southern, southern countries, uh, in Portugal, Spain, Italy, or even uh, in Greece, they want to test their products in, uh, in the north countries. And this is an amazing opportunity because we provide the incubation, we provide the contact, we provide the partners, and for, for so far the feedback that we have been receiving is quite good from the, the startups that actually did the program this year. This is something that we have been testing, and I think it can be a really make a difference in terms of in the future of every, anyone that wants to uh, really start a, uh, create a startup. 
So thank you very much. This was my presentation for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Hi, Ines. My name is Jose. Um, I'm really excited to hear about what you did with the Startup Exchange program. Um, you mentioned that it didn't quite work out the way that you expected, um, but I see a lot of promise in it. Could you speak about some of the things that didn't work out the way that you expected and how you're planning on changing it, maybe? So basically, this year we started to, to uh, make partnerships with six incubators uh, in, uh, in Europe. We, we talk with different incubators, we, we decide with them that each one of them would receive two startups for a period of two to three months during the summer. Uh, what, what we did was we launched the program, we, we start uh, like advertising it and asking for, uh, for applications, but most, this, uh, most of these incubators were quite busy at the time. So it was really hard for them to spend time promoting the program uh, the way they should. Um, so we, we uh, receive applications. We receive a lot of applications from Portugal where it's easy for us to control or to, to make sure that uh, we, we can advertise properly. But it was really difficult to receive more applications from other countries. So what, basically our uh, initial goal was to, to help 12 uh, startups to move to other country, but we end up just uh, helping three startups moving, uh, two Portuguese startups, one, move, uh, one f went to Finland, another went to Germany, and a, a German startup went to Portugal. So next year, what we want to do is to change a little bit the program to make sure that we can send Portuguese startups to different uh, incubators ar around the world. and. Um, and create a program in Portugal where we can receive, in, uh, can receive uh, startups from specific areas like healthcare or finance, where we have partners, we have, where we have mentors, and this way our value proposition is much uh, better. It's a different country where in the summer we don't have days like this, so it's another value proposition, and, um, and this, uh, that's our goal basically, to change a little bit the program where we can control much better how we're advertising it, how we select the startups and the value proposition that you can provide. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.